Hello, good day and welcome to Model 3 of our course on Introduction to the UNCCD. My name is Richard Byron Cox and I'm the UNCCD's Capacity Building Officer. Today we are going to talk about the Secretariat, which is where I work, what it does, why it exists. Well, if you look at the Convention itself, you would see in Article 23, it states that there should be a permanent Secretariat and that is what we are. And in that article, it gives specific functions, general functions to the Secretariat of the UNCCD. First and foremost, we are supposed to service the, the COP, the Conference of the Parties. As you would recall, the Conference of the Parties is the most powerful body of the organization. It was established by Article 22 of the Convention, actually. And so our job is to service this Conference of Parties. And we do this by providing all the documents, by we can show that they are translated by organizing the conference themselves, whether it's held in China, India, or in some other country. It is our job to ensure that these are organized. We service the Bureau of the Conference of the Parties as well. So our job is to ensure that the Conference of the Parties really function, that it, it is realized, it is organized, that they have all the documents, that participants are there, and so on and so forth. So that's our first function, services to the most powerful body of the UNCCD process. Then we have to service the subsidiary bodies. As you would recall from Model 2, the two major subsidiary bodies are the CRIC and the CST. As I explained in that model, for example, the CRIC has sessional and intersessional sessions and we have to service these. So we are the ones who collect the reports from all the countries. We are the ones who write the, the, the analysis and so on, which is all given to the CRIC, right? We don't want to organize um, um, the conferences of the CRIC. The last one was held, as you know, in Georgetown, Guyana last February. So here we are that our job is also to support the CRIC, to ensure that it is organized, that all the documents are there, that it is properly surfaced and so on and so forth. Outside of that, we also provide services to the CST. As you would recall, the CST is established by Article 24 of the Convention, and it is the Committee on Science and Technology. And it provides advice on these two areas to the COP. Now, the CST has its conferences, has its meetings, and it also has a bureau. And our job is to ensure that all of these meetings, the bureau, etc., all the services that they require, um, are provided. That is what we are paid to do. It is our job. So we service the COP, which is the powerful body, the top of all, the, the CRIC and the CSD. That is core function of the Secretariat. But outside of that core function of the Secretariat, one of the things we are supposed to do is to facilitate the implementation process. And we do this in different ways. Okay, one, if you look at the, the article I quoted, Article 23, which establishes the, the Secretariat, you would see that there it is written that we are supposed to help affected developing countries. We're supposed to try and provide some assistance to them. And this we do by providing different services, including capacity building. As you would recall, I'm the capacity building officer of the organization. And so we try to provide as much capacity as possible, strengthen capacity, both individual and institutional capacity, to ensure that these affected developing countries have the resources, the capacity necessary in order for them to efficaciously implement the convention. So this is another major part of our, of, our, of our job. Apart from that, we are supposed to coordinate the relation between the UNCCD and other international bodies. For example, uh, the Secretariat on Climate Change and the Secretariat on Biodiversity and the synergies that goes with all of that. Our job is to assist in that process. So we help to sort of manage and coordinate the relation between the UNCCD process and these other processes, climate change and biodiversity, just to name two. As you know, these three conventions are sometimes referred to as the real conventions. So we deal with that question of relations with, with other bodies. And there are others, for example, UNDP and UNEP, FAO, and so on and so forth. But we do a lot of coordination um, 
as regards relation between these organizations to ensure that the, the convention is implemented. Now, apart from that, apart from doing all of that, we are also responsible to ensure that things like what is called the SPI, which is the Science Policy Interface, and other groups like that function because they have an important role to play in the convention process, in the implementation process. But they need administrative services, they need organizational services when they have meetings, conferences, etc. And it is our job to ensure that these services are provided. So we also um, assist in, in, in those areas. Apart from that, we are called to generally facilitate the implementation process, as I said earlier. And this means that we ensure that when country parties need assistance, technical assistance, for example, let's take the National Action Program, and they might need some advice on that. Or let us take, for example, the land degradation process. They might need some assistance with that. They come to us, and where our mandate allow it, and where the resources allow it, we also assist them. Now, there is in an important question that most people ask, which is this. Why is it you don't ever see the UN city on the ground? You don't see us planting trees. You don't see us digging up the earth and putting in whatever, etc. Because it is not our job. It is not our mandate. The parties has never asked the UN city secretariat to do so. And if we try to do it, we would be breaking the mandate given to us. We have to abide by the mandate given to us. So we are the custodians of the process, but we are not an implementing agency. We don't go on the ground and implement things. We facilitate that implementation. There are agencies which go on the ground and help you, which are implementing agencies of the UNCCD. I could mention, for example, the UNDP, UNEP, FAO, right, and others. We do have those. And of, and of course, as you would recall, I mentioned that we do have our operational arm, which is the global mechanism. And that global mechanism does do quite a lot of work where it mandates allow on the ground for, for country parties as well, in terms of, for example, the tagging set it, the tagging set, setting program for the LDN process. But the convention secretariat is not called to implement things on the ground. So where you think that this is, this is the case, it's a misconception. We are not called to do so. And until our mandate changes, we cannot do that. Now, the Secretariat um, has a, a particular structure, and that structure is always more or less dependent upon the management. The management decides how the Secretariat is structured. At present, we, we have an Executive Secretary who is directly responsible to the Secretary General of the United Nations. We have a Deputy Executive Secretary and we have different units. The major units of the Secretariat are the STI, which is where I work, and STI just simply means the Science, Technology and Implementation Unit of the Secretariat. Apart from that, we have the ERPA, which is the, the, the unit that deals with external relations and public information. We have, of course, the administrative and finance unit, which deals with all the administration of, of the secretariat and how it functions. You know, I mentioned um, the GM, which um, does operational work on the ground. And then, apart from that, we have a series of liaison and regional offices that help implementation. So for example, we have regional offices in Africa, we have regional office in Latin America and the Caribbean, we have a regional office in, in um, Turkey for the Northern Mediterranean, we have a regional office here in Bonn which deals with um, Eastern Europe and uh, we have a, a liaison office in New York that deals with our interface with the General Assembly as well. So these are all part and parcel of what is the UNCCD Secretariat. I do hope that you found this lecture useful. Remember, we provide reading materials and there is always the convention itself that you should read for more information in completing Module 3. Until I see you again, I am Richard Byron-Cox. Have a good day.